Hi everyone, are you interested in the same custom parts that I built for Cruise Missile? Don't forget to check out supercruises.com if you would like your own versions of the same parts I used on my car. Welcome everybody to the Dave's World YouTube channel. This video is going to mark basically a two year anniversary of one of my first videos that I ever put out. It was how to install a boost gauge in a second generation cruise. For starters, we're doing a very simple modification to be able to get a boost and vacuum reference off of the engine. Yes, it's reversible. I've had people make comments. The hose is like a dollar at the auto parts store. Why wouldn't it be reversible? The reason I decided to make this video is Think of my YouTube membership as me being your performance mentor. I help a lot of people do these installs and I felt while I'm helping everybody in the membership and the people who contact me through the membership that need help, instead of me showing that old outdated original video that I did two years ago, I wanted something a little more detailed that has everything in it that I explained to everybody while we're going back and forth installing your boost gauge. So enjoy the footage, hopefully you like it. Now this allows you to get more access back here so you can reach these things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the connector out. I wanna show you how to do it off the car. Okay, so what I did was I isolated the hose that I made. Now this hose originally was U-shaped, so it would go from the back of the intake manifold, make a U, and then go right to the back of the throttle body. In order to get this off, you have to do it by feel, but what I did was I took a small screwdriver, you're just gonna pop up the green tab and these literally pop off. Once that's off, you're just gonna cut the plastic pipe. Then what I used is 3 8 tubing. Now, I have this big heavy duty fitting on here. This is an old like gauge fitting but you can go out and get a regular aluminum T or you could just simply get a plastic T kit. Make sure it has in there a 3 8 to like a 5 16 adapter uh, or you can adapt, you know, you can adapt down just as long as you end up with a 3 8 here and right here, you can, you can adapt it down for the actual gauge hose. This is all you need to make. You don't need to see footage of the install. You just need to know that to put this back in, you're gonna pop it right on and just push the clips down and that's all. Uh, this is the coolant overflow tank. The way you get this off is you're gonna pull this clip and then you wanna get this out of the way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Okay. Okay, so my car's manual. Because my car's manual, it's very hard to get through the firewall. I had to actually drill a hole right there for my boost gauge hose. All I did was make it bigger so I could fit the boost gauge hose and the wires for the air fuel ratio gauge through the same hole because I knew that spot was safe. If you have an automatic, you can just go right to where the linkage is for the clutch and there's like a big rubber grommet you can use. But for me, I had to actually drill a hole. There are other places through the firewall you can go, but I used this one previously and it's worked great so far. If you see right here, I use two fuse taps. These are really cool. What they allow you to do is plug in where a fuse is and then give you a wire that you can tap into so you can run an accessory. So I ran these to my boost gauge. The fuse all the way to the right is fuse 37 and the fuse to the left is fuse 29. So 37 and 29. One of them is 12 volt hot. One of them is battery hot, and that's what I'm gonna use. I am very sorry for pausing the video, but I thought it was very important to go over the wiring for the gauge. So let's put up some fancy graphics. You'll see here that there's four wires on back of the gauge, yellow, black, red, and orange. In the next scene, I will show you where I grounded the boost gauge, but for right now, let's focus on the power side of things. The yellow wire is battery hot. That's gonna go straight to one of the fuses. The other thing I did was I tied the orange and the red wire together. What this does is power the gauge and also actuate the dimmer. The gauge itself is actually pretty bright during the day. And at night, it's really bright. It's almost like having a flashlight in your face. Even with the dimmer on, it's still a pretty bright gauge. 
So what I did is tie them together and I just tied that into the fuse tap and plugged it into the fuse panel. Now what I'll do is play the video and show you how I grounded the gauge. The gauge is pretty simple. There's a panel right here that comes off. I grounded the gauge right here on this piece of metal. You can see it in front of the light, it's right here. And then you can see the wires with the hose coming up through the air duct to where the gauge is. Okay, you can see an angle on the pipe coming out of the back of the gauge. I bent that, so when I put it into the pod, I don't have any pinches on the line or any issues. Now I had people cut the pipe off because it was too long. And what happens is the gauge has a restrictor in that pipe. If you cut that off, you'll lose restriction and the gauge will be erratic. So what you need to do is leave that section of pipe that you cut off in the hose somewhere to restrict the hose so the gauge still works properly. Okay, let's make sure that since I took my whole car apart to show you guys how to do this, I didn't break anything and we'll test the gauge. All right, car started right up. No check engine light. The gauge looks like it's working. It doesn't flicker in real life. It's just flickering because that's what LEDs look like when you film it. Oh. Oh. 